Today, we're going to be talking about the movie that just came out, just blew our minds. It was risky. It was all over the place. But I think overall, like, it shows the capacity of what Marvel can do uh, with Doctor Strange. I know we haven't talked about this openly, yeah, we but what did you, this, this is, is actually our first time talking about this, yeah. but what did you think of the Doctor Strange movie? Do you yeah. think it's a classic, like, were they playing it safe or, or what do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. And just a heads up for the audience, we're going to be talking spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we recommend you watch it. Did it do things that were risky? Yes, I definitely think it took risks. As a matter of fact, I think it took more risks than most comic book movies have in a very long time. So it's really rare when this happens, like movies like Logan, movies like the Dark Knight trilogy, those three movies. Though all of those movies take risks in the superhero yeah. genre. But I would even go as far as to say that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness had moments that were even almost more violent than the Dark Knight, which is saying something. I mean, because the Dark Knight usually considered the most, or the closest to R-rated superhero movies out there. Especially when that scene where Wanda is like so crazy and like she she goes she just kills like the the the, yeah. the group of like four superheroes like especially when that first guy with the fork on the the head yeah just the, dies Michael, that yeah. was like where I was like whoa yeah everyone you just never see a superhero it, die like that gasped. like the audience actually gasped when that happened and it took me a second to register what happened I actually didn't realize what happened at first. it shows like that crazy like devilish part of her, you know? Yeah. There's definitely a lot of um, religious overtones, I guess, in terms of like mm. devil, like, cause I mean, yeah. that is Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi is the director of Dr. Strange Multiverse of Madness, as many people will know, is Sam Raimi, who also directed the original Spider-Man trilogy with Tom McGuire, some of my favorite Spider-Man movies. And then he also directed Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. And well, all the evil, a lot of the Evil Dead stuff basically. And he also directed a lot of horror movies. So I think knowing that in the context of that, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I can see, definitely see all that, why all that's in there, all the kind of demonic type stuff. And some other people come at it like, oh, now Marvel's pushing devil stuff. And I'm like, that's, that's a minority of people. I haven't heard too many people say that, but, but I'm like, no, it's just, it's a horror director. So like, what do you expect? You know, that's kind of, you know. And that horror director stuff really came out with yes. like, Doctor Strange, you know, doing doing like spells, but then he goes into witchcraft and like is doing, you know, whenever he whenever he brings back that uh, Doctor Strange from the other universe that was dead, and then uses the demons that were attacking him into yeah. like for 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 his good or like for for himself. What is going on? Like, yeah, it's like what at that point I was like. What it what what just happened? Like what what was this guy like on to to create yeah, yeah. this like yeah, <laughs> like stuff something to go on a trip? Yeah, he he. Yeah, I know. It's just it lost a little bit of the the sense of like who Doctor Strange is, right? Yeah, Especially yeah. how it starts off. Like you're like, oh, how could he betray the girl, right? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. It's yeah. cool how like it ends off like. There's no doubt that this is definitely a different. I would say a different take on Doctor Strange, especially when you compare it to the first movie, because in the first movie, there's so much inception, like visuals, the mirror dimension, and all that. So even in No Way Home, there was a little bit of the mirror dimension. And we saw like just one little tiny, like few seconds of it in this one. And I think it's just the director, like the director's vision. And I think it's that just a true. different take. And a lot of people want to compare it to the first movie and say the first movie is better and all this. I feel like I enjoyed and was more entertained by Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness than the first one. And I just watched the first one a few weeks ago to like, you know, refresh myself. And I do, I love the first one's visuals. I think it's awesome, all the psychedelic stuff. And it definitely, I think it has more trippy visuals in it and stuff. And that's really good. And that's great for that movie. And I'm able to compartmentalize that and say, that's this movie. And then here's Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness over here. And it's a different movie because it's, yeah. it's just a different, it's a different ride. It's a different story. It's a, I, I like that. I like change. I like to see something that I haven't seen before. And he's walking down, up the steps. It's like screeching. It adds a level of horror. And at that point, I was like, whoa, what What kind of movie am I watching? Like, is yeah, this I'm is not, this a horror yeah, movie or is yeah, this I'm not watching a Marvel, or this a Marvel like they movie? Said they, right? were, they said they were making one. So Doctor Strange wrestling with the darkness. I really think that's to me, that's better because it's more 
it's deeper. It's not so surface level. It's that's Sam Raimi. Like that's what he does. He, if you look at, you know, he makes horror movies, obviously. And even in his horror movies, like his recent ones, there's more depth to his characters and little nuances and things that make you care more about the characters. And I notice he really tries to do that. He tries to flesh that out compared to other directors. And then the element, the story about the sister dying that he couldn't save in the frozen lake. Like that was so cool to add that. And then you go back to the original Spider-Man trilogy. So like you see him doing that there too with Spider-Man. Spider-Man wrestled with darkness in the first movie when he tried, when he accidentally killed Uncle Ben's killer. He wrestled with darkness in Spider-Man 3, of course, with the symbiote suit and Venom. And yeah, it's al- yeah, it's almost like yeah. he was embracing you know, his dark side in order to, to like conquer the, the bad. I was thinking about this with Wanda, you know, she almost looked like some sort of like exorcist, like, like something from the movie of exorcist, like where she comes out, like, like popping back into place and stuff. That reminded me of the uh, Pennywise, the clown from the it. That's, that's what it reminded me of. Cause it's like, I was like, what is going on? You know, like at that point I was like, this is, this is, this is another level. <laughs> and there are people like complaining, saying it should be rated R and stuff. I mean, it's definitely a strong PG-13. But when people say that, I always go back to, well, I think it's it's people who don't expect it to be that way because it's a Marvel movie, a Disney movie. And so yeah. their expectations lead them to be thrown so off guard that they think, oh, this should be rated R. But then when you look at other movies that are PG-13 in other genres, like horror movie, there's plenty of PG-13 horror movies that do push it almost that far. I often find myself loving a movie more for its style than its story. And I freely, I just, I can't help it. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I'm an artist, uh, polymath, all that stuff. And, and I love creative stuff. I love filmmakers who push the boundaries. I love movies that are avant-garde. I love art house movies. I like it when movies do things that are different. So whenever I see something like Dr. Strange and Multiverse and Madness, where they're doing horror that's never really been done in a superhero movie. They're doing like cinematography is so because Sam Raimi is so creative with the cinematography and his sound design, which for me to talk about. Yeah, the sounds. Yeah. So like all of that, I, I get so caught up in that that I'm like, this is a great movie. I love this. This is so cool. And then I I don't really pay attention to like the problems with the plot or like the story. So I don't know. Maybe there was like a little bit of like some loose ends. I would say that the connections between one place to the other. I, I think like meeting the the villain was like a little bit weird. I know I know Wanda is supposed to be the Scarlet Witch, but just how how it was how she became like angry and like almost to the point of insanity felt very uh abrupt. Like it didn't build up. I mean I know who she is from one division and all that. The the idea of like time the, the watch and the girl right for for uh dr strange and she was getting married yeah, and all was, this it was kind of like a super spider-man moment right that, where like yeah, I, was gonna, I was gonna bring that up all of the stuff with christine palmer's character and dr strange reminded me so much of the original spider-man trilogy with mary jane and peter about the conflict and like the deeper emotional part of it like even i don't know about you but the the whole wedding scene I felt like I was watching a scene from Spider-Man 2. Like the way it was yes, the yeah. way it was shot, the music, the way it was filmed, the dialogue, Completely. the acting, the way they talk to each other. I was like, this feels like people are having a real conversation. And I'm like, that's what I've been wanting. I've been yeah. wanting superhero movies to feel genuine, like Spider-Man 2. Yeah, and, and when he was that. walking in the street, he wants to feel normal. And then people are like, hey, Doctor Strange, or you yeah. know, they're telling him stuff. Yeah, it, I felt like I was watching Spider-Man. Like some scenes were like Spider Man for did sure. The, uh, on that note, did you did that first action scene with the eyeball monster? Did that remind you of Spider Man too? Because it definitely did for me. Yeah, I, I mean, now that I think about it, maybe it was, it was like you know, because it's yeah, yeah. Dr. Octopus. Remember when Doctor Octopus was climbing that building and Aunt May was like caught up there and all this? That's what reminded me of that whole scene. Because mm, mm. America Chavez got stuck on the ledge of the building, and then all another thing was happening over here, and then that. It just screams Spider-Man 2 to me. I rewatched a ton of the Marvel Studios movies like within the past month. As we talked about in that podcast about Marvel movies. So guys, check that out. You know, they're not as bad as I remembered. Maybe I, I learned to appreciate them for in a different way for different reasons. But I have to admit, I didn't feel that attached to the characters. There were even times where I was like almost bored, which is weird when you're talking about blockbuster movies. I almost because I felt so disconnected from the characters because there weren't 
there weren't enough scenes of drama that, and I didn't feel invested in the story. And so I was just like watching it to watch it. In Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness and the original Spider-Man trilogy where Sam Raimi does, what I think Sam Raimi maybe played a role in, I don't know for sure, is trying to add more drama, trying to add fleshing out the characters more deeper moments. Like we'd like the, mar- the whole wedding sequence that reminded us of Spider-Man 2. 